Hey, this is Patrick calling. Hey, Patrick. How's it going? Good. How are you doing? Doing pretty well. Can't complain. Nice. Yeah, I really appreciate you agreeing to do this. It's uh, it's really awesome. It looks like you're doing some really good things, and you're really, um, yeah, definitely into some good stuff and growing your I'm, business. I'm trying to. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and thanks for contributing, too, to that, um, the post I did last, uh, in October. Through... Yeah, absolutely. Always happy to contribute. Yeah. Um, so do you know, do you know what this is kind of about? Like, I, I, sh I don't know if I, I think I shared the first local marketing diaries as a stubbed post with you. Yeah, I took a look at it. Okay, yeah. Yeah, so I'm basically just going to, like, talk about, like, ask questions about your journey, your 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 life, your business life, like, what got you into what you're doing, and that kind of thing. So I can just kind of start up if you want. Yeah, that works for me. Cool. Um, so it looks like a lot of what you do is, you know, it's content, it's writing, it's blogging. Um, so since so much of your work revolves around writing, like... Has that has writing always been a skill or a creative outlet for you, like growing up and through through your life? Um, I would say that it became a creative outlet for me starting and around like college time. Mm -hmm. And um, what happened was I was working at uh, the student life marketing and design department, and I actually did web design for them. Mm -hmm. But I think they realized that you know I'm not like. The like quiet sort of introverted web designer person and you know they thought I like to have fun in the office and I guess that's what led them to asking me to contribute to the student life blog uh, this was at the University of Iowa and um, I also helped with social media stuff for them in addition to some of my web design duties so that was really like the first time that I had kind of considered it as a creative outlet and it kind of just you know picked up there. Mm -hmm. So you kind of stumbled upon your skills as a writer, basically, it sounds like. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't something that I had really any experience <laughs> with up to that point, but, um, you know, I did enjoy writing for the audience of college students, and, you know, our whole thing was finding things for kids to do that, you know, wasn't alcohol-centric, so I had a lot mm -hmm. of fun just, like, you know, trying to find interesting things to do in my college town and, and making it interesting for that audience. Okay. But you said you started in web design there, but it sounds right. like, it sounds like you, from what I've seen, you still do web design, but you're kind of like, you're really focusing on the blogging in it for other brands and for your clients. Um, right. So, so, so kind of like, what I made you go in that direction? Web design is being kind of like a, like a, a gateway into this writing thing because, Again, when I was in college, um, we, we experimented with a lot of different content management systems, just like based on the different types of projects that we were doing and also, you know, the level of understanding of the people that we're passing them off to because we did a lot of stuff for student orgs or like events on campus or even like the bookstore. And um, it was during that time that I discovered WordPress, which, you know, is still a very popular CMS and um, one that I write about a lot now as part of my business, but that's, it, it kind of was like a, a gateway, the web design thing, into blogging, just because it's like the nature of where you would store your blog and, mm -hmm. you know, how to advertise it. You have to, like, learn about kind of the back end of these tools and be able to, in order to be effective with it. Mm -hmm. So you kind of, you, you sort of realize that you have the aptitude to sort of translate business needs into into the content that they need along the way then. More or less, yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, that's great. Um, so, you, I think, so from what I read, like you, you have these two big posts which are really interesting about your your first year as a freelancer and your first year as a, as a business. But like, what? so what you said you were working for the student life groups so <clears throat> did you have anything like did you have that co like classic 
corporate nine to five job as well, like after after college, and then you kind of translate uh, transitioned into freelancing, or did you just go right into freelancing? Sure. So my freelance work actually started also in college, and also as a result of that job, it was a very sort of uh, foundational role for me, or fundamental. Um, and so my boss, he had like a freelance project that he have time for that he referred me to to do you know in addition to the work that I was doing for the Department of Student Life but to be you know completely handled on my own terms outside of that job so the freelancing really started there and I've always kind of had you know like one project at least to the side of different work I was doing and usually at the beginning they were web design projects but then um, as I got closer to freelancing full-time and then, you know, making a business out of it, then I started to pick up more writing gigs to my freelance work. But, um, you know, to answer your initial question, yes, I did have a traditional job, a traditional nine-to-five. After I graduated, I, you know, at that point, that was really all I was ever considering. Mm -hmm. Um, And my first job was actually at Groupon in Chicago, and I did sales for them. You know, I went through their whole sales um, training, starting with, like, the warm leads, and then eventually doing cold calling and stuff like that, and, um, you know, it was at that time that I was I was starting to realize after I got into the cold calling side of things that it just really wasn't something that I wanted to do forever. I really mm-hmm. had always seen that job as being a stepping stone into doing something more with Groupon on the marketing side, okay. but unfortunately, I quickly realized that the marketing positions were few and far between. Um, there is a lot of, you have to know someone, you know, like people only really get promoted there if they um, have friends in high places. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, I, I had been like helping with their blog. I've been like, you know, trying to get more involved with organizations so that they knew that I was someone that, you know, was dedicated and it, it just like nothing I did really mattered and I got impatient but um after that I moved on to work with a social media agency also in Chicago um and again I was doing sales for them but they also let me do a, a little bit of help with like marketing stuff mm-hmm. um especially when it came to writing for their blog so so that position fulfilled me a little bit more but I was really starting to get you know, I was, I was bit by the bug. Like, my parents, or my dad was an entrepreneur. Um, you know, I, I saw what that life could be like. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I was just getting fed up with the fact that nobody would just give me a marketing job, you know. And I was like, well, if they're not going to give me one, if I can't, you know, fight for that, and if they, if they don't see what I'm capable of here, then I'm just going to go and do it myself. Oh, nice. So... So then, like, did you just make a leap into it, or did you have clients kind of on the side already, or were you just like... Oh. I had some. Mm-hmm. So I had, like, one big client, and he's also who I would consider to be my mentor. Um, he had hired me for a freelance project that I had to the side of my full-time job, and, um, you know, I, I, I had been discussing with him, and he, he had a sales background, too, so we were very, very similar people. Um, and I had been, you know, just kind of discussing to him how unfulfilled I was feeling in sales and, you know, just I was 
So you, that's awesome. So you had like that foundation ready to roll as you stepped out of the like, corporate job, and then it allowed you to sort of like have that and then build upon it. Basically, it sounds like. Yeah, I mean, it was really the perfect situation. I couldn't have, I couldn't have planned it better myself. So you know, for the people that are considering making that leap, I'm all for it. But I think you really need to, you know, pitch and line some stuff up, and it doesn't have to be like you know, your whole, like, schedule, like, you know, completely covered with things to do, but just have enough so that it's not, you know, an awful first couple of months. Mm -hmm. Another thing is if you do have a corporate job, keep that until you've built up a bit of an emergency fund to cover your expenses as well, because, you know, once, once it's gone, it's gone, and it does take some time to, to both pitch you know, to get your pitches accepted, whatever line of freelance work you do. But then also, even once they're accepted, to get paid. You know, some companies pay net 30, some pay even later than that. Mm -hmm. So it's like, you might you might have landed that perfect client already, but if you're not going to get paid for a while, then you need to figure out your cash flow issues before you quit your full-time. Right, right. And, and you, so you were planning that as you were at your full-time job, like you were working with this, this person... And sort of like planning, planning your escape, basically. <laughs> yeah, I mean, more or less. I and part of it too, like when I was planning to quit, was just like even deciding if this is something I wanted to do. Which in the back of my mind was always yes, but mm -hmm. of course it was scary. You know, it took some time to build up my confidence in being able to do it, and even just to build up my confidence to talk to my boss and be like, listen. <laughs> this is it, yeah. So yeah, see, so I mean, I can. The scary part it makes a lot of sense. Like, what what were some of those those fears or that you had, or like some of the challenges that you foresaw by doing I this? I mean, I think it's like imposter syndrome. You uh, know, it's uh -huh. like you know, am I am I actually good enough to be able to like make people pay money for this? And you know, beyond that, do I have enough skill? ability to pitch and you know just keep the pool mm -hmm. fees going to be able to like pay my bills every month but even beyond that you know to actually thrive as an independent business owner or as a freelancer or whatever because I don't want to just live I want to you know be able to travel I want to be able to go out to eat every once in a while and I'm a pretty frugal person so I could probably get by with less than most people but at the same time you know Money does it. What's the word I'm looking for? It enables you to do the things that you enjoy. You for know. Sure. Yeah. I don't know if I'll ever be a millionaire. I don't think I ever need to be a millionaire. I just want to make enough to do the things that I enjoy. Pretty mm -hmm. much. That yeah, that makes sense. So, how how have you been able to build up? Or do you, I guess first of all, like, do you see yourself as being in a place where you're, you know, you have that steady work? And you have enough clients to like to be doing what you want to do at this moment. Yeah, I think it's been that way probably at least this entire past year. Mm -hmm. The first year was a little bit more tricky, but even so, maybe halfway into it, I was like, you know, not not worrying so much about you know when the next paycheck is coming in, or you know, being able to to do the things that I like to do um you know we're talking in january here and january is typically a slow month for just about any business but especially mm -hmm. for freelancers just because you know people are on holiday they're not really like worried about like the next project yet mm -hmm. so um so it's times like these when i like to take a little bit of a step back from work just because a there's not as much to go around in you know times like january and B, because I just, like, this past year, I've just been hustling so hard that I'm starting to feel a little bit of burnout. Mm -hmm. So so the answer is, you know, yes, I'm in a good place. Um, but I think, you know, another consideration with regards to that is, do I want to be doing client work for the rest of my life? And the answer is no. Mm -hmm. So my, my next struggle is, what do I replace? Right. Do you have any any thoughts on that? Do you have any um, any goals there? Kind of. Um, you know, one thing I, I'm definitely interested in the idea of passive income. I know it's a difficult road to go down, and some might even say that it's like a sleazy sort of way to go about making money if you're using like affiliate marketing or um, like the, my other consideration is to sell online courses. 
courses about, you know, building your business and different aspects of that. Um, I, I guess I don't see that. I don't see that. Like, I mean, it, it just sounds like education. It doesn't sound sleazy at all to me. I don't know, maybe the affiliate thing, but building an online yeah, course. I, I hear different things from different people. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, not that I necessarily care, but <laughs> I like to get a read on the way things are, the way they're perceived. Right. Gotcha. So you're talking about the, the hustle of last year and it, and it sounds like that's the hustle of become, you know, going from being a freelancer to becoming a business. Um, and so like, what are some of the things that you would do that, that you saw some of the tactics you did, that, you know, you saw results from? Um, I think that one of the biggest contributors to my success is it, it's kind of the fact that doing freelance writing is like the self perpetuating marketing machine because, you know, like, like even contributing to that post I contributed uh, for you, it's visibility for my name, it's association with the different brands I either write for or contribute to, um, you know, it's linked back to my website or people can learn more about me, and um, I've also recently changed it so that on my website I have my pricing, at least for my writing services, mm-hmm. so that if somebody gets in touch with me from my website, I know that we're already on the page about pricing I know that they landed there because they read something that I wrote and they liked my style so by the time that they actually get in touch it's not really a sales call it's just more of a like you know what do you want me to write for you mm-hmm. so so yeah in general just like you know being a byline writer for the majority of my clients is something that helps me to market myself and get more clients so that's that's kind of like the single biggest thing and you know, it's something that other people can take advantage of, too, by doing guest posts. Mm-hmm. But it's, just, it, it's easy for me just because it's like, this, this is what they're paying me for. So right. it also doubles as a marketing measure. Yeah, they, they see what they're getting. They can they can look you up easily and find out what you've already done. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Um, the other thing is I'm pretty active on social media. And, um, you know, my other sort of inbound marketing tactic is just, constantly talking about all the different stuff I'm doing. Um, so, you know, I'll share, like, client testimonials. I'll share articles that I've written for people. Um, I'll share, like, SEO, social media, or, like, content marketing tips to uh, further associate myself as being an expert in those fields. Um, you know, I do have various content assets I've created for my website that I share, um, so it's, it's just about, for me, I don't, after, you know, working with Groupon and working with that other agency and doing sales, like, I'm, I'm actually a pretty good salesperson, but I just really hate it. Mm-hmm. Um, I hate cold calling people, and I hate being a pushy person, so I'm kind of a dad to this mindset where it's like, you know, you can either, you either like me or you don't, here's all the stuff you need to know about me, call me when you're ready. Mm-hmm. And um, I feel like my social media marketing kind of takes that same stance. It's, it's really just, you know, a, it's top of mind marketing. It's, here I am, you know, we're connected. If you ever need some help with content marketing or SEO or WordPress or whatever, um, you know, you, you know where to find me. Mm-hmm. So being that... So I don't know if that tactic works for everyone, but it works for me so far. Nice. Yeah. Um, yeah, it really does seem like it's working. Um so, like, being that visible online and being that visible on social media, like, does that ever sort of, like, I don't know, give you, feel, like, a little bit too much, like, too much overexposure? Do you ever feel like you want to, like, kind of pull back from that just because you're so out there? And I'm wondering if you have clients that sort of feel that same way, too, because I think it's an obstacle that some people, fa- some agencies face, is, you know, having clients that are, like... Uh, it's like the the glaring light of being out there online, you know? Right. Yeah, it's something that my mom has previously discussed with me concerningly. She She's like, you know, you're giving too much away, kind of hold something back. And I'm like, mom, like that totally was the way things used to be. But in this age of information and, you know, building an audience online, the quickest way to grow trust with people is to kind of show them your cards. Mm-hmm. And for me, you know, what's ended up happening as a result is that people, I feel like, I, I guess I don't really have a way of proving this, but I feel like people, you know, when you write for 
marketing. Uh, they read it, you know, they appreciate it, they like to understand it, but then they call, you know, their expert or whatever to actually execute it. Mm-hmm. So I, I feel like for the most part, when I'm writing that type of stuff, if somebody takes that and then does it themselves, like they were going to do that anyway. They were just looking for, you know, something to solve a problem for them. And that's great because they might share it. They might, you know, help more people learn about me by doing that. Um, you know, I, I my biggest goal, I would say, is just to help other people live this sort of life that takes them away from a corporate nine to five that's inflexible, you know, that allows them to do the things that makes them happy. So if my articles can do that, then, you know, I've achieved my goal. But yeah, the other thing is if somebody reads it and they're intrigued by the concept, but they don't really have time to execute it themselves, then, you know, I've already pretty much shown them that that's something that I can do for them. So mm-hmm. I don't I don't disagree with my mom. I think it's different from when she was a child or, you know, when, even when she was an adult in her early working years. But um, it's actually, it's, it's interesting how much of marketing overlaps with sales because, it, you know, in the past, the salesperson held all the information before the internet. And mm-hmm. they could pretty much say whatever they wanted about products and, you know, okay, buy it now but nowadays most people do their own research or research excuse me before they even contact the salesperson so you know those who provide the information those are those who are forthcoming with it tend to be more trusted and trust is one of the most important things when connecting with someone online so that's something that i seek to perpetuate in the content that i create that's a great point um so we're talking about the hustle, and you're talking about yeah, the um, the year that you've, you've had, and that you've been experiencing like a little bit of a a burnout at this point from all that hustling. I was just wondering if you have like um, sort of you you've probably experienced that before too. But do you have ways of dealing with that? Like so you're not so you you know you're balancing life with work. You're um, you're taking breaks. You're like what is it that you do to like sort of avoid that sort of burnout? Um, I mean, I would say it's helpful that I'm, like, dating someone, and he likes to go out and do stuff, because if it was just me, I'd probably just sit at my computer all day forever, and told people, (laughs) you know, told me to go out or something. You'd just be Um, focused on that, yeah. Right. I mean, it's it's so tempting, even even with him in my life, to just be like, no, I just need, like, a couple more hours, or whatever, Mm. but it, it gets to a point where it's like, I'm... I'm I'm working too much. I need some like outside air. Yeah. Um. And so I live in Colorado now, and luckily, you know, there's tons of opportunities to go hiking, or you know, now that it's the winter, we go skiing almost every week. Um, nice. I I like to meet with people during the week too. Um, my best friend's mom lives here, so we'll get brunch, or you know, I have a couple friends who are also freelancers that I'll co-work with or just grab coffee with or whatever. So, I, you know, for me, my, my de-stressing work and my unplugging is usually, it usually involves me leaving the house in some way. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, whether that's like a structured activity or not, it doesn't really matter so long as I physically remove myself from my computer mm-hmm. in my apartment. Yeah. So it's like, it sounds like a social time too, because I mean, I'm not sure how you have your, your business set up, but, um, it sounds like you're working from home. So you must not have like, you know, must not have coworkers around. Right. Um, so exactly. That's... Yeah. So it's, it's definitely a bit of a shock compared to like when I worked at Groupon, because when I worked at Groupon, it was like, I was in like a frat or something. It's like, everyone's like 23 everyone wants to like go out and get drunk every night and you know it's probably not something I could sustain now but it was really fun at the time mm-hmm. and I made a lot of friends there and you know every day you know people will stop at your desk and go out to lunch whatever and now I don't have that anymore 
Besides my other freelance friends, but they're not really my coworkers. Would you want to build your business into something that, you know, where you have a dedicated office space and you have, like, employees and, and all that kind of thing? I would say that I'm partially there, um, and I can see the benefits of having an office space. It'd probably actually be really good for my motivation, but at the same time, one of the greatest things to me about you know building your own business, whether that's as a freelancer or incorporating it or whatever, um, is the fact that like I can just wake up whenever I want, assuming that there's no calls or like pressing things. I'm really a night owl. like get to work at 8.30 or 9, like that always threw me off in the morning. It always kind of ruined my energy for the day. Mm -hmm. So now that I can like get up at 9 if I want, um, I feel like I'm, even though I'm starting later in the day and sometimes I can play catch up with my client emails and stuff, um, overall it results in better work for me because I'm just in a better headspace. Yeah, I, I honestly feel the same way. I'm, I'm exactly the same way. Um, so, so that, I think a lot of people are, but we can push them to yeah. fit a certain mold. Yeah, like you kind of have to fit in if it's a corporate job. You just, you just got to do it. Um, right, you don't really have a choice. Yeah. So that, is that freedom one of the, thing, the main things that draws you to, to working for yourself and having your own business and doing your own thing? It's a bit of a sociopathic so, economic system we live in, really. But um, yeah. So, do you have do you have any plans like to get out of the middle of your own business? Like writing, writing is really hard. Like I'm I'm a content writer. Yeah, I'm a content strategist, so I know it's hard. Like it takes a lot of skill to do that kind of thing. But um, it seems like you might be you're you're still doing a lot of writing yourself. Um, but do you, would you be able to hire, get like a team together that could kind of like remove you from doing that work? Yeah, I mean, so that's definitely a consideration, like going the agency route or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and having a team in place where I'm more or less the overseer. Um, but see, my, I don't know, it's like, I don't want to be an editor either. I mean, I guess I could hire an editor, but <laughs> yeah. at the same time, it's like, yeah. whatever I'm sending something out to a client, I, I need to have at least, like, looked it over, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, I'm not just going to send something to one of my clients that, like, doesn't have the Maddie stamp of approval. So it's, like, that's totally an option. Um, but I don't know if that's the direction that I want my company to take, you know, as, like, the end goal or something like that. Mm-hmm. So 
that's still like kind of a work uh, in, in progress. It sounds like like determining direction. Is. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's un- totally understandable. I mean, you're you're a very young business, um, so I guess another question I was, and we're we're at half an hour. I I don't want to like take you away from anything. I do have a few more questions I could ask. Um, yeah, go for it. Okay, cool. <laughs> I will. Um, <laughs> so I w- part of what I'm curious about is um, dealing with the setbacks and the failures that come with running a business and like how people re- rebound from that and how they deal with it. And I'm just wondering if, if you could give any examples of things that have just not gone right and how you, how you've been able to deal with that. And if you have a philosophy for, for bouncing back from things and not taking them personally. philosophy to have yeah basically yeah, I mean, always be prospecting. That's really <laughs> yeah i was gonna, i was gonna say always be hustling so it sounds like it's basically two different words to describe the same thing um right so i switching gears a bit i i was just wondering like and this is a question that you don't have to answer if you don't feel comfortable with it but it's just like i was wondering if you face any stereotypes or challenges with like being a, a young woman dealing with clients who are probably often like mm-hmm. male execs in the cl- like the classic corporate environment. Sure. Yeah, it's, it's an interesting question, so I'm happy to answer. Um, honestly, I haven't. I think it's just because I'm like a loud, influential person. <laughs> People know better than to fuck with me. <laughs> nice. <laughs> That's great to hear. This is what I've worked hard to do. 
boat, like gilda. This is what people pay by full price to have access to. So why why do you, new person, deserve a discount, you know? Mm-hmm. So it's just about, like, reinforcing what you say, you know, being consistent with what you say and not letting somebody kind of elbow you around. And then, of course, before you do the work, get a contract signed because even if they're not enforceable, it's still something that you can refer back to regarding the scope of work and the pricing that was agreed upon. Yeah, like we agreed upon this. So at least you have right, something. Right, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah, that's, that's so, good. I mean, I'm sure there's plenty of freelancer, you know, solopreneur women who deal with a lot of shit. Um, I think that maybe it's the nature of what I do. Maybe writing is something that just, I don't know, people don't mess around with too much. Um, you know, I don't know. Mm-hmm. But I could, I could see how that would definitely be a problem in our modern society. Yeah. Um, I've just been, you know, luckily pretty burnt removed from it for some reason. Well, that's good. I mean, that's, <laughs> that's great. That's good to hear because... I think the other thing, too, mm-hmm. is that I work with a bunch of international clients, so they don't have the same prejudices about women that, you know, a lot of our domestic big businesses do. Ah, uh, uh-huh. Just like that's how Iceland, you know, they just announced that, like, uh, wage inequality thing that they announced like a thing that would fix that it's a law but yeah like they, they said it's a law can no longer earn to me that's amazing but that's like that's europe you know like <laughs> now we need that <laughs> yeah it's amazing it's amazing but i mean it makes all the sense in the world i uh, same. it's yeah. just amazing because we don't we have we've never had it <laughs> right um, it's such a foreign concept to us yeah yeah for sure um so, like, actually switching gears again, like, you mentioned that your dad was an entrepreneur. I was just wondering if you, like, if he was at all a mentor to you or if he's been at all a mentor to you um, and just kind of seeing that lifestyle and seeing, like, the freedom or that he had, too, if that influenced you at all. I mean, yeah, definitely. He's been a mentor to me. And honestly, my mom has, too. She um, She's always just been one to follow her dreams. I mean, she's been more of, like, a a corporate worker type, but, um, you know, both of them are very hard workers, and something about that must have, you know, stuck with me since I was a kid. Mm -hmm. Um, I used to go to my dad's office after school when I was in middle school, and, you know, both him and some of the people that worked for him would take an interest in me and, like, you know, just the goofing around that I was doing there. And that's actually when I taught myself HTML and CSS. It was going there after school, talking to his web developer. Um, at the same time, I was learning about Photoshop. Um, it was just, you know, for me, it was just messing around. I was, mm-hmm. you know, a, a nerd kid or whatever. But it's, it's something that definitely sticks with me. And even now, whenever I come across, like, you know, my dad didn't have a writing business, so none of that shit's going to be relevant to him, but stuff to do with, like, taxes, for example, or incorporating, or, you know, administrative stuff, like, he's the first person I call whenever I have any sort of struggle with regards to that, because I know he's already dealt with it. Mm-hmm. That's a great resource to so, have. That's really cool. And it sounds yeah, like... it's very helpful to have someone like that in my family that I can go to for, you know, non-biased advice. Mm-hmm. Or I guess biased towards me, but you know what I mean. Well, like, advice that's in your best interest, yeah. Right, exactly. And that's and that's great. Like, so it sounded like the sort of the spark to your future career happened happened there in that in the office too, as you were like, kind of yeah. messing around. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it was both seeing what could be, you know, owning a company, and then also learning the skills that would eventually help me to set out on my own so yeah very much so it it started early for me um and even like in high school I was in we had like a business club um and when I went into college you know I I already knew I wanted to do business and then I eventually decided on marketing but yeah for me it started really early I wasn't I wasn't the type of 
yeah, that's a huge head start to know what you want to do before you even like hit college. Uh, right. And yeah, so I was actually I was wondering too, like what kind of what has drawn you to marketing? Because um, it definitely it takes a mix of skills, you know, creativity, persuasion, tactical know how, that kind of thing. But right. What, uh, the unofficial answer is that I'm bad at numbers. Although marketing does involve numbers, but I was like, okay, well, that knocks out econ, accounting, stat, you know, like all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Uh, But I knew I wanted to do business, and it was when I was working in that marketing and design department at school, um, I was actually kind of jealous of the people who were working directly with the clients that we worked with, you know, the the student orgs, the events and stuff, and I was like, that actually fun job to kind of be like talking to them and shaping the strategy as opposed to executing it which is more what my side of things was with the web design Mm -hmm. um and so you know i i eventually kind of found my sweet spot in marketing which involves a bunch of different sides of things i guess Mm -hmm. so you enjoy that kind of like the planning the planning with clients and kind of like figuring out what, what's best for them and like working with them and, and their needs, that kind of thing. Yeah, I mean, I would love to do more consulting stuff. For me, that would definitely be a, a cool way to take my business into 2018 instead of doing the actual execution. I'd love to help them do the strategy side of things. Mm-hmm. Do, so we'll see what happens. Mm-hmm. Do you mix that in now as well? Like, do you kind of like even if they, you sort of like give unsolicited pointers, if, even if they don't ask for it, you're like, this is, this is kind of like the way you should actually be going, you know? You do that kind Definitely. Of I'm not afraid to, to tell them if I think it's not going to work, especially if they're going to be judging me on the results. Mm-hmm. You know, that's, that's something too. When I worked at Groupon and when I worked at that agency, selling things, you know, you have this, this sort of moral obligation if what you're trying to sell them isn't actually going to make a difference in their business, especially if they're calling you as like a Hail Mary. Mm-hmm. Um, to me, I've, I've never been comfortable selling something to someone that I knew wouldn't work. Mm-hmm. That's good. That's, yeah. Having some ethics is pretty key too, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, and it just helps you market things better and sell things better when you when you believe in it too, and you believe in it. Exactly, that's that's the thing too. It's like if you don't believe in it, then it's gonna come across. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Um, okay, well, I mean, I think I've I've exhausted the questions that I had, um, but I was wondering, you know, if there's anything else that you, that you would like to add in, or any any sort of pointers, because you know our audience is is a lot of um, people just starting out. Um, like you, even though you've been you've been in it for a bit, but you're you're sort of on the beginning part of your your business career. So yeah, I mean, general tips. Let's see. <laughs> this is always a hard part. I mean, it's, no, it's okay. Um, I would say in general, um, it's always going to be hard at the beginning. You know, you have this sort of summit you must reach before everything falls into place and even once you reach it you know there's new challenges there's new worries there's new things to think about um one of my challenges is that i have too many ideas and Uh not enough time to execute them all well and um you know like one thing that i want to mention that i'm trying this year is i started an e-commerce website it's called tanks that get around.com it's like a it's like tank tops for travelers with like funny things and stuff mm-hmm. um and so for me this is a test alongside that idea of passive income i mean it's not going to be passive but it's um you know a new way to make money that doesn't involve so much client work so mm-hmm. i think you know you have to find a healthy balance of kind of seeing the plan you know, whatever it is that initially got you into business, and if that's working, then stick with it until you find something else that could potentially overtake it. But, you know, be open to new ideas. Just don't try to execute so many at once. Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. You know, don't don't narrow your focus so that it eats up your effectiveness elsewhere. Right. And so how do you how do you follow those threads? Like, how do you follow the thing? There's so many different things you could be following. So how do you identify things? You just you test things out and see if they work. And if they don't, you move on to the next thing. Yeah, I mean, for me, that's difficult. Um, maybe it's easier to explain than that. Like, I go through cycles where I, like, focus. I'm always focusing on my main business, which is, you know, the writing stuff, content marketing, mm-hmm. SEO, whatever. Um, but there's also times where I have, you could even call it, like, a side gig or a side hustle in addition to that. Mm-hmm. Now that I don't have a full-time job, I do have, you know, I have the time. The time is all my own, so it's, like, it's what I make of it. Um, so I kind of cycle through these different ideas I have, and I focus on maybe, you know, one at a time in addition to my main business for a couple of months. And then, you know, kind of see where that goes, table it, move on to the next, come back when it makes sense. So that's kind of what's happening with this e-commerce store. Um, my last couple months of last year were just so full of client work that I, I, I just didn't even have the time to consider it. Mm-hmm. But now that things are clearing up a little bit, I have a little bit more time since January is just a historically sort of, you know, less, less work type month. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm, I'm definitely, you know, digging right back into it. I've got new ideas, new strategies that I'm implementing and so now the trick is just to be more consistent with it so mm-hmm. you know if it's something that I can see that I'm putting time and energy into it and it's paying off then I'll keep doing it basically mm-hmm. and it sounds like windows of of time are like good good times to like regroup test something out uh, test something else out and sort of move exactly. forward exactly yeah I, I mean the beautiful thing about online marketing with regards to SEO, at least, is, like, once you create it, once you've, like, you know, created some content assets for it, like, people will come. You know, the next question is, well, how do I keep them coming back? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So, so, yeah, so working on different strategies for that in the meantime. Cool. Okay, um, This well, this has been really great, Maddie. I really appreciate you taking the time to do this um yeah gonna, thanks for the invite yeah i'm gonna wrap it up but um you know i'll i'll work on the transcript i'm gonna sort of work like work on the main themes and, and sort of shape it and then i'll get back to you um with a draft so that you can review it and make sure everything looks good from your end too perfect um but until then thanks again and i guess we'll, we'll talk soon All right, bye-bye, mate.